look at this story together to see, to see um, what's going on um, in it. So here, a caliph, Abdul Malik, of the Umayyad period, um, is talking to a scholar and says, you know, tell me about love. And um, he asks on what's that page number, uh, page 99. Um, uh, he says, you know, so how's, you know, your love for Azza is strong. Have you ever seen anyone whose love is stronger than yours? And uh, Abul Hakam Madani goes to relate the story, um, which is based on um, the story of uh, this love affair that dates back to the pre Islamic period between Qais and uh, Layla, the Layla and Majnun story. Have people heard of this story? Layla and Majnun story about Layla is this beautiful woman that Majnun fall, uh, Qais falls in love with. Majnun literally means the crazed one, the one who's gone crazy, and he goes crazy out of love for her and uh, you know, completely extracts himself from society. And there are multiple versions of this story that have been told in Arabic and in Persian and in Urdu and in English. Um, I think Sting has a song about it, uh, about Leila. Um, that, um, this, is, this is a version of that story, and this is a part of that story uh, that, that he goes about recounting. So he says, once I set out wondering, full of longing to mention the name of Azza. At the time, Azza, uh, Azza's people were in, pasturage of their, uh, in a pasturage of theirs near our tribal ter territory. As I was making my way, can you see where I am on page 100? As I was making my way, I came upon a man who had set up, uh, set up some snares while he was ga uh, grazing his camels far from his kin. Going up to him, I asked, is there any food for a guest? I'm a good distance away from my tribe, he said and I have set up snares, so bear with me a while and I will drive the gazelles to you. If something falls into my snares, you will, uh, we will eat it together, for I have not eaten a thing for three days now, whereupon he, sets, uh, he set to driving the gazelles. Now, what's interesting here is, he's not talking about this, the love story doesn't begin with this sort of um, you know, romantic, you know, eyes locking or anything of that sort, even though there are, there are at those aspects in the Lelia Mejnun story too. Um, it deliberately begins with a social context and social norms. You have a guest that you need to feed. Social norms require you to take in guests. You know, you've heard this about, you know, three days you're supposed to take in guests if they come and visit you and feed them. You're supposed, you know, so it begins by talking about social norms. And you could guess what happens immediately afterwards. Love begins to stand in the way of those social norms, right? That the love that he begins to talk about is starts challenging those social norms. Um, I mention this because of some of the more contemporary, especially in the United States, when people have tried to imitate some of these stories, they miss these things completely, right? They see only the love story. But this is really significant. He begins with saying, like, this is the normal thing to do. So we're really not just talking about love, we're talking about love in social context. We we're talking about the political effects of love, the social effects of love. We need to take all of those things into, into consideration. So it begins by saying, there are duties I need to fulfill, social norms that I need to abide by here. There are things that I need to do here. And he's, he acknowledges them, says, yes, you know, I haven't eaten too. Let's, let's go get some food. Into the snare there fell a long-necked, fair-coated gazelle, and he rushed towards her. I followed close behind him and listened. He released her from her fetters. And while I looked on, he wiped off the dust she had gotten uh, on her and kissed, and kissed her, sipping her saliva. So I'm reading this very poorly. You know, you should be a guest. What, what the hell? You know, he hasn't eaten for three days. <laughs> he's he's got to feed this guest, and he goes and lets go of this gazelle and does all these haram things like, you know, have his, his, the gazelle's saliva be, uh, you know, be kissed by him. Then he let her go and set the snare again. When he came over to me, I said, what was that? Was that the right tone? <laughs> Have you ever heard of anyone doing what you just did? Here we're both complaining of hunger. God gives us relief, right? This is like, you know, prayer. this is what God gave us these animals to eat and provide for us, and you deprive us of our food? Alas, he said, I looked at her at the base of the, uh, and the full length of her fine neck and found that she resembled the one I love. So I released her for the sake of the one I love. Have you ever seen anyone who would eat what looks like his beloved? As the gazelle was going off, he spoke these lines. O oh, image of Layla, do not be afraid. For today, wild beast that you are, I'm your friend. 
I say this having freed her from her bonds. Is it not for Layla's sake, if you wish to give thanks, you're free? So, you could read that depending on your own sort of inclination, and you could say, like, Mejun's an idiot, right? <laughs> right? He's going hungry. The thing should be, the moral of this story is, love is bad, right? Uh, it harms the self. Look what's happening to him. He's emaciated. He's going hungry. He's not fulfilling his social no duties. Uh, he's being a bad host. He's like, doing all, you know. Or you could read it as a romantic and be all like, that's the kind of love I want, or that's how I want to be loved. Right, um, And the story doesn't tell you how you should feel about it. It allows both of those readings to stand alongside one another. And this was one of the power of literature that Muslims, had, especially in the classical period, had really realized. Um, you know, I hate generalizations, but um, if you look at the classical literature that talks about Islam, at every point, it raises the issue that ought to be dealt with, and it provides multiple ways that that issue could be looked at, and the author stands back. <laughs>